Hey guys, it is Jabid. Um, that's like David with a J. Jabid. Jabid. Pronounced Jabid. So, a lot of people don't pronounce it right. They pronounce it Jabid. That's fine with me because we're in Texas. So, this is my deal. Today I was thinking about uh, kind of like sociology, like socioeconomics. I was thinking, do people really understand the ones that have to stay home or have to stay in closed quarters for the majority of the year, like for school or for personal study or because of disability or because of any of those things during this pandemic? Do they consider for one second what we're going through? I'm not sure if they do or not. I, you know, I think that, as usual, those who are disabled and and or uh, living on any kind of assisted, you know, assistance like housing per se, um, like um, the National SNAP program, the food stamps, all these things. It makes me kind of wonder, you know, the help that we get, we're grateful for, yes, but I think that the mental health aspect of that scenario could be better. And when I was, when I was a kid growing up, you just had to kind of find a way to deal with it. And, and so what I would do is I would always find, um, if I was trapped indoors, I would find somewhere to occupy my mind like find some kind of stick or stones or anything I could find in the house. Um, if there were any toys that my older siblings had not destroyed or, you know, gotten rid of out of anger, I don't know, uh, I would find um, a way to occupy my time. And so a lot of times I did a lot of writing and reading because they didn't like to read and write. And so I'll be right back. Okay. So they did not like to write and read, had to some tea. They did not like to read and write, so I had to, they didn't particularly care for it. So I was, most of the time I was doing their homework at, you know, there were all, some of them were five grades ahead of me, some of them were four grades ahead of me, and a couple were two or three grades ahead of me, but eventually I was always, you know, going for them in school than they were, because you know, they, they would pretty much drop out at an early age. And, and I understood that because I understood the dynamic of the household. I understood the stresses that they were going under, but I don't think they had stopped to consider what kind of pressure that would put on um, their younger sibling. And so I allowed that stress and that pressure to continue into life until I got to a certain age. And then I think it happens with everyone. I got to a certain age where I was like, that's enough of that. You're, you know, suckling off my teat the way that you suckled off dad and mom's teat. And you're not going to do that to me because I'm the baby. I'm the younger one, you know, and I'm sorry that my life is, you know, making more of the tools available to me than you are. Um, my life is not any more grand as far as financial, financially. I'm struggling. I'm a student. I'm trying to make something of my life. Um, I'm sharing my life with the uh, family members that I find most important uh, in my particular life that we seem to be able to uh, help each other along in the world. And I've always been a part of their family. And my family just never, my biological family just never really understood that. You know, that biological side was always like, I, 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 I. and so, um, I think that's what a lot of people need to understand is that there are some mental health concerns that I think all of us have with how this closing us up uh, for whatever reason is going to affect us in the long run, you know, like for me, you know, I, I have ADHD and I like to go outside and I like to, you know, get into the fresh air and I like to, you know, let the breeze uh, hit me on the face. And I like to, you know, I need to wear my sunscreen because I'm fair complected. I have some Indian blood, so that, you know, helps me out there. But it didn't help me out until I've gotten a little bit, you know, uh, darker. And then, then when the melanin starts coming out, I start looking like, you know, the brown colors coming out. And, you know what I mean? We're all, we're all mixed up. And so uh, you just have to make the tools available. 
Um, my point is, is that make the best of it. If, like, for me, I let my family know when I want to go walk. Like, if I have a family member that tries to say, I want to go walk, I want to go walk. Well, if I'm saying to you, I don't need to go walk right now, that probably means I, I don't want to go walk because I'm tired. I've been studying a lot, I've been working a lot, and this outside, going and walking for two or three miles is not my idea of a good time at this moment, you know? Like, maybe if you would ask me later in the afternoon, then I would go walk with you. But you're asking that question right now, and it's like, really? After, we, I've been ran around all morning in circles, like, dealing with such mental, you know, stress, it's just like, enough to make anyone just, you know, really, it's too much pressure and stress like that, and then, um, I just think that we fail to consider others, and consider others' state of mind when we say things, or when we think we know what's best for someone, and maybe we say something that we think would be best for them, I think it's very important to understand that that advice that you're giving may seem really right in your mind, but we don't know what that particular person that's receiving other advice, the advice, we don't know what's going on in their mind and how they're going to process that advice at the time. So leave the advice giving to the mental health professionals, to the people that they need advice on, if it's money, if it's these kind of things, make sure you're giving good advice. And if you're not getting good, solid advice, go to the internet and find good, solid advice to give to them. Because if, if you give bad advice, they're going to think you're a bad person, ultimately. So, and then in, a, in my field, in the field of psychology that I'm going in, they're always going to consider if something doesn't go the way that they wanted it to go and they followed any kind of advice that we give as a mental health counselor, then they're going to think that our advice was bad to them. And our advice is always for the individual to live a healthier life, right? We want people to be their healthiest and their most wonderful uh, aspect of themselves, physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever gets you there. We want you to be the best uh, in that state. And understand that life is not always going to be in the best of that state, but it's going to be like a roller coaster ride. There's going to be ups and downs, ups and downs. And so as long as you're not going up and down, up and down too many times per day, like cry, sad, cry, happy, sad, cry, sad, sad, all throughout the day, then you're probably okay. If you're having a lot of ups and downs throughout the day, then yeah, you need to go talk to someone. If you're having those, you need to help, you know, talk with a mental health counselor, let that person counsel you on some ways to cope with that stress, right? Uh, help discuss some medications with you that maybe you could ask a medical doctor to give. Um, these are the kind of strategies that you want to do, but you don't want to make all those decisions on your own. You've got to find someone that's older, someone that has enough education, and someone that knows what they're talking about. Younger people, like when I was younger, I used to think I... I didn't think I knew everything and I was always curious. Like I used to think, okay, I, I thought I knew that. And I, I was so fascinated when older people would tell me their stories because I was like, and I'm still like that. Cause I'm like, these people are like living tape recorders and think about how, whatever age they are, they have experienced things that you're going to experience. They've already experienced it in their time. And yeah, it may be different time as far as technology goes, but things are not that much different in life. It's all basically the same ride. It's the same roller coaster. It's just different gadgets and technological things that we have to help each other understand generationally. But we do not in any way need to try to be selfish, condescending, arrogant, demeaning, rude. And sometimes we are when we're tired. We are. We get tired. We don't get enough sleep. We are. Um, and owning up to it, own, having ownership of, you know, hey, I know I was in, in a, I was tired and I was kind of in an agitated mood because I didn't get enough sleep. I'm sorry I said that to you. Or I apologize. Or I, I won't do that again. I'll try my best not to do it again. That's a really good one. I will try everything in my power. I'll really, really focus hard and try not to do that again. 
that usually makes people feel better because why? Because they know that you're having ownership of what it is that makes them feel that way. And you're going to do your best not to repeat that. So that's the best advice I can give today. Just something I was thinking about during these times that you're, all of y'all feel like when you're trapped indoors, um, for whatever reason, um, just take a deep breath and know that this is today and it will move on and this too shall pass. In your most gracious name, Father, we, we pray. And, um, and you call upon your higher power in the name of all that's righteous and all that is pure, uh, is what I always try to say. And um, thank you so much. Uh, peace out.